are you surprised when you read all these briefings going on about a dinner last week? No, absolutely not. Uh, this is the way in which Brussels uh, impedes negotiations. Uh, what they are going to be doing for the next two years is uh, pushing London towards uh, a stance, a defensive stance, through leaks, through distortions, uh, and through a strategy of making Theresa May fight for her right to negotiate. She will be negotiating over her, her right and opportunity to negotiate. There will be no real negotiations. Right. You, you famously sort of recorded some of your Eurogroup meetings because they, the briefings were kind of... You wanted to make sure that the briefings were accurate to what you had heard in the meeting. What's so strange about that? I had to report to Parliament. Yeah. I had to report to my Prime Minister, to I my wasn't Cabinet. I was accusing you. I was saying, but no, were the briefings often distortions? That this is even they, a, a, they were distortions. Issue. They were distortions. The no, there were no briefings. There were no minutes. There were no the private briefings that go off to the press of afterwards. But the main issue, as far as I was concerned, I was engaged in 10 hour long negotiations. Then I would have to go to my parliament and report what happened. And you know what? After 10 long, strenuous hours, the human mind uh, slips and suddenly becomes a whole a big haze. So not having uh, minutes right. for this is, is, is the opposite of a democratic, transparent process. Do you think Brexit is going to work out for the UK? Because you, you, were, you were against it at the time of the referendum. Oh, I was against it, even though nobody can yeah. accuse me of being a lackey of Brussels. Yeah. Uh, my, my great concern for both the European Union and Britain is that our leaders, London and Brussels, are locked in a ranking of preferences which produces a bad outcome for everyone. Uh, their power at the personal level, Theresa May's, Jean-Claude Juncker's, um, Angela Merkel's, is inversely proportional to the mutual advantage that we can get out of it. What's, what's driving the, the deep establishment, the European establishment, as you, you refer to it? Because, it, I don't know, these are not evil people who no, want no, to no. put, not put suffering all. around. That's not your case. It's so like what? a Shakespearean tragedy where everybody is trying to do their best. It's like watching King Lear. And, you're, you know, and, and you wonder, how can these smart people be so deluded, the, the characters in, in the they're tragedy? They're playing their role and what they think they need to do in you see, this the situation. Great, you've got to understand that Juncker and Merkel um, and you know, the powers that be in Brussels, their greatest nightmare is a mutually advantageous agreement with Britain. Because this, in their mind, would encourage others to be apathy, to demand stuff and possibly to get out of the EU. Uh, on the other hand, Theresa May is locked in this uh, inanity of putting the end of freedom of movement above everything else, above the interests of uh, British industry, of British ag agriculture, British universities. So th 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 this is a political coordination failure uh, of uh, an immense degree. Right. Um, politics these days, uh, where are you on the liberal establishment? Because the liberal establishment is the much persecuted group at the moment, <laughs> it's not had a great couple of years. Where yeah. The, the, because in many respects you're talking about the liberal establishment and the deep establishment are the same thing, aren't they? They're, they're what? Yes, they yeah. are. They are to a very large extent. Look, they resemble these days the person who's killed his parents and he's pleading for leniency at the court on the, on the grounds that he's an orphan. Uh, they, 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 <laughs> they, they, they have been ex extremely authoritarian, the way they dealt with us, right. the way that they're now dealing with Theresa May. They've been extremely authoritarian. They have been imposing loony economics. The idea that you take the largest loan in human history and give it to the most bankrupt state in Europe is loony economics. Yeah. So they've been doing all this. And then now, now that they are in retreat, they are complaining about the, the alternative facts, the distortions, yeah. the leaks, and the loony economics of the national Who would you vote for in the British general election now? Oh, Jeremy Corbyn, for sure. Mm. And, and, and I'm a leftist, you can't, yeah, you, yeah, you yeah. can't change your spots. Yeah, but you, in the, in the, in the, you, you're a bit of a fan of Macron and in France. Well, and he comes out of the book quite well as someone who's able to of, think of a little all bit of my best friends and, and my opponents. In the case of Britain, for instance, I think that it's madness that the Labour Party, for instance, is standing, is putting up a candidate in places like Brighton against Caroline Lucas because of the sectarianism of the Progressive Front. Uh, I wish there was uh, a nuanced progressive alliance in Britain yeah. so that we could all vote for it. But in, in France, you're absolutely right. Look, I'm a leftist. What did the left do in 2002 when Le Pen senior uh, was pit pitted against uh, uh, Jacques Chirac? 
we all went behind, we rallied behind Jacques Chirac. He was, a th he was an admirer of Thatcher, he is conservative, he was uh, not at all uh, a friend of the left. And yet, the left used to understand that binding together with liberals, and even neoliberals, against the fascist, racist, ultra-right was our absolute uh, duty. Now, why have we changed that today? Well, because the, the, the Mélenchons have lots in common with the far right, and some of many of his voters are going to go, because they're all anti-globalisation, which is the big schism in the, the, the I'm anti-globalisation. I'm anti-neoliberal. But, above all everything else, I'm anti-racist and anti-fascist. And we should see eye to eye, you know, by the way, Macron is infinitely better than Chirac was. Macron was the only minister that I met during my tenure who actually understood the problems of authoritarianism and loony economics in Europe and who actually tried to help Greece not be crushed. We need to leave it there. Yanis Varoufakis, Thank nice you very much. Thanks.